Hey guys, my name's Cameron. I've been in the hospitality industry for over 15 years, and I'm gonna show you today some hints and tips about how you can take your home cooking to the next level. What I'm starting with is I'm starting with some lamb shanks here and I'm going to show you how to slow cook these so they're, they're just tender and they fall off the bone. Now the first thing you need to do is get your lamb shanks and I'm going to put them in a bowl. I'm going to coat them in oil and I'm going to season them really well with some salt and pepper freshly cracked. I've got some rosemary here. I picked this from my garden and I'm just going to throw this in here just to give them a nice flavor. Next up, I'm just gonna toss these through and then we're gonna put them aside and leave them sit for a while just to get some flavor in them. All right, so the next step is to prepare the sugo or sauce. Now what we're doing for that is we have some carrots, some celery and some onion and we're gonna dice it up finely. I like to leave the skin on the carrots because I feel like a lot of the nutrients and the flavor come from the skin and I'd hate to waste that. And what I'm gonna do is just take the top off, the bottom off, halve it, cut it into thin strips. Once I've got it into thin strips, I'm just gonna cut it down long ways and I'm gonna go into about half a centimeter to a centimeter dice. Just gonna throw that into a bowl and put that aside for later. We're gonna do the exact same thing with the celery and the onion. Although just with the celery, just a bit more coarse, just slicing it thinly into strips. Again, just throwing that in the bowl. All right, lastly, we're gonna dice the onion and then we'll be ready to go. So to dice the onion, I just take the ends off, peel the skin off, and then the easiest way to do it is just to cut one centimeter segments that way. Don't cut all the way through, otherwise it'll fall apart. And then just the same through the middle. Cut that way. It's nice and easy. Uh, you get a thick, a consistent diced and good product. All right, so now for the fun part. So we're just gonna go over here. We're gonna sear these lamb shanks off and get them sealed. All right, so I've got my lamb shanks here. I'm just gonna sear them in a hot pan. So I fill that with some oil and let's get my lamb shanks. And they've been marinating for a while now. And I'm just gonna put them in here. I'm just gonna throw all that oil, salt, pepper, and rosemary on top of it. And what that's going to do is that's just going to seal the flavor in nicely and set the standard for some really good food. So while these are searing, I just thought I'd talk you through and just let you know a little bit about what the process we're going to go through. So what I'm going to do is we're going to sear these lamb shanks off. I'm going to throw the onion, the carrot and the celery in. And then we're going to add the tomatoes and some beef stock and we're going to put it in the oven and we're going to slow cook it for about two to three hours at about 200 degrees and then for the last half an hour we're going to really crank that temperature up and just hit it at about 250 to 300 and then we should be left with a product that is just smooth and falls off the bone. So next up we're going to add the mirepoix so that's the French culinary name for a mixture of onion, carrot and celery. It's commonly used as a starter in stock and we're just going to fry that um, and if you have a look at this you'll see we're starting to get some nice color in the shanks uh, if you could smell it there's a beautiful um, aroma coming from the rosemary and everything and the onion the carrot and the celery just going to add some real sweetness to it it's important when cooking stuff like this that you use a vegetable oil because we're working with a high heat. Uh, I always choose a vegetable oil or an animal fat over olive oil. And the reason is because olive oil burns at such a low temperature compared to this and we're going to be cooking it at some seriously high heat. So we don't want 
to get any chance of any burnt flavours coming through there. Just going to leave that simmer there for a couple of minutes before we move on to the next stage. And probably the most important part is to get a photo because it's always important to flex for the gram. So you can see here we're starting to get some real colour in the bottom of the pan. The onion, carrot and celery is cooking through, it's turning translucent. So next up what we're going to do is we're going to add our tomatoes and our beef stock. And I'm just going to add them. I've got about half a litre of beef stock now and I'm just going to add that as well. And then I'm going to bring this up to heat and then I'm going to throw a cover on it. The reason we put a cover on it is because we want as much moisture to stay in there as possible and that's what gives you some nice juicy tender lamb shanks. Uh, I don't have a cover for this pan so you can easily substitute with alfoil and that works just as well. From this point here it's important I don't season it again until I'm ready because the, the flavour of the seasoning can change through the cooking process so I'm just going to wait until I've got a finished product and then I'm going to season it to taste then. So now this is brought up, you can see it's starting to simmer there. I'm just going to cover it with alfoil and we're going to put it in the oven. I'm going to slide that in the oven there. I'm going to set my timer for an hour. So in an hour I can check it, have a look at it and just see how the sauce is progressing. Alright, so it's been an hour with the lamb shanks now. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull them out. I'm going to take a look at them and just see how it's going and how they're progressing. Come over here and you have a look at this. You can see this thick, rich tomato -y sauce starting to form. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them over now because I want everything to be in the sauce. See I haven't lost too much liquid here. It's all pretty well stayed with me and that's because none of it's been able to evaporate because of the foil cover on it. Alright so what we're going to do now is going to cover this over, put it back in the oven for another hour and then once it's been in there for another hour we're going to take the lid off we're going to put it on 300 degrees and we're just going to really blast it. We're going to get some nice colour through the lamb and it's going to really thicken up the sauce. Alright, so hour number two is up for the lamb shanks. I'm going to take them out I'm going to show you how we're going to finish them. Alright, so I've taken the top off cover them in this sauce again just because I want as much flavour through these as humanly possible but if you take a look you can see I've got a spoon here and I can already start to pull these apart and pull this lamb shank again we're just going to coat it with the mixture all right so the last thing we want to do is we want to finish it off add some more beef stock just so there's a lot of liquid in there because we've cranked the oven right up to 280 degrees now and it's going to be a lot of heat and a lot of this is going to evaporate. You can see how I make beef stock in another video. So if you take a look at this, again, I almost forgot, don't forget to flex for the gram. Damn, that looks good in the oven now I've got it on 280 I would put it on 300 but my oven only goes up to 280 so that's gonna be fine I'm gonna set the time for 30 minutes and I'm gonna show you when they're finished all right guys so everyone knows the best thing to put with lamb shank is the humble mashed potato I'm gonna show you how I make it it's a little bit different but I think it's better now I like to get unbrushed potatoes and when you boil things water gets in and you, you begin to dilute the flavor of things I think like it's like if you have a drink and you add water to it the flavor is diluted I think it's the same for cooking vegetables and potatoes so the way I make mashed potatoes get my potato wrap it in foil skin on um, I really like the skin to stay on I really like I want to get that earthy flavor I want to taste the ground it grew in. I want to taste everything. Um, I want to get a real, the real potato flavor. Then all I do, chuck these bad boys in the oven with my lamb shanks. Then I'll show you what I do next when they're ready. All right guys, so my potatoes are done. I'm going to pull them out. I'm going to show you how to make the best mashed potato. All right, so the potatoes, as you can, well, you probably can't see it actually, but I pull them out, unwrap them, 
Woo, they're nice and hot. Show you how nice and soft they are. Knife just slides straight in. Now what I like to do, just cut them in half like this. Then I'm gonna leave them cool for a little bit because they are hot. And if you can see that steam, that'll burn you. Been there, done that. Now the best part about mashed potato is the creaminess. And of course that comes from butter and I like to use a lot. What I do is I just dice that up. And I'm probably not gonna use all that, but I could. Who knows? Then all I do is I grab my potato and I squeeze the skin and I squeeze all the flesh out and that is burning hot. Yeah, that's real hot. You can see if you just grab it and squeeze it, all the flesh of the potato comes out. It's a really cool way. This is also how I make my gnocchi. So I'll show you how to make gnocchi in another video. But again, the important part of making gnocchi is to not have this overly wet potato and to choose a nice waxy potato. It doesn't seem like it, but potato selection plays an important part in the dish that you're cooking. And how you treat those potatoes, again, is a big part. Now, what I like to do is I'll just add some butter and I'll leave that to melt. I'll probably add about half of my butter and I'll wait for the heat to melt that before we go any further. Okay, while we're waiting for our butter to melt in our potatoes, I'm gonna pull the lamb shanks out and show you how good they look. How good is that? So I'm just gonna scrape this sauce away and what we have here is some of the best looking lamb shanks you will see. I guarantee you, if I make it out of this video without any stains on this jacket, I'm buying a lotto ticket. All right, so the butter's still melting with our potato and I've got this lamb shank here. I don't know if you wanna come have a closer look at it, but I'm just gonna show you how easily this falls apart. You just, that's a spoon, ladies and gentlemen. And that is some tender lamb. Oh, in comes the fork. He wants some. You know what, stuff? I'm giving him a big bit. He's earned it. He's worked hard today. How soft is that lamb? How tender is that lamb? Fantastic. Now, the butter has all but melted in my potato. I'm just gonna add some cream, uh, about that much, as always. I'm a bit of a shaky sort of guy. I'm not really good with measurements, not my thing. Uh, that's why I'm not a baker, again. So I like to get a nice smooth consistency with the potatoes, and that's achieved through cooking them correctly, and the right amounts of butter, and the right amount of cream. If you are unsure, it's always best to slowly add your butter and slowly add your cream. Just, you can always put more in, but you can't take it out. And once you put too much in, it is no good. All right, final step, bit of a season. Fair bit of a season. I like my salt and pepper. Mix that all in. And now we come to the time to plate. So, oh, that's hot still. Funny how an oven will do that to you. All right, so now we're ready to plate. We've got our potatoes. I was gonna quenelle this on, but I figure, you know, it's a, such a hearty home style dish. Let's just plate it as it is. Lamb shank on top of that. Get out of the way. And then we're gonna finish it off with some of this sauce that's in here. It's just gonna go over the top.
And there you have it. Slow cooked lamb shanks, rustic potato mash. Mm. Oh, there's dinner. <laughs>